That surprise witness, I love you. I just saw what you said. And he said that you live right around here in Philadelphia. I want to do an interview with you. So I saw a video of you and people characterize it as ranting and raving and whatever. But what you said in this- When you've been through what I've been through, yes, it is a rant because I have a lot to say, but I don't know anything about this free band movement whatsoever. And because I, I couldn't have the interweb, this chick knows a lot of information. Jack Tillery said, bam, she lives in Philadelphia. I'm like, what? Get a hold of her then. I spoke I'll be in my way. It was a ruse to get Lima and Jesse Ray and Brandon Cliff. They came in for an intervention at the shaman's house. He does not want his address one bit to be shared. It was so rude what they did. And my mom was like, damn, I had nothing to do with it. You had everything to do with it. You fucking made her change the flight because you knew they were coming. What you have is big news because I could have done an interview with you and we could have talked, 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 but you have fucking proof of everything. Hello, everybody, and welcome to That Surprise Podcast, a show I actually just created and might literally never do again. So many things have been going on the last week that it is difficult to even sort through and process my own self. So I'll try to keep it short. And over the course of the next few weeks, I will be releasing more information about all the shenanigans and fiascos that have taken place in the last week. This is an active and ongoing story, so I am sure that there will also be additional updates to provide in the coming weeks. I do have some notes here that I'm going to be referencing because I want to make sure that I cover some of these points. Almost exactly a week ago, so Sunday, April 16th, 2023, I was doing my meal prep, minding my business, spinning around in my yard, enjoying the beautiful day. And I come inside, I look at my phone, and I notice that 13 minutes prior, Bam Margera on his alternate account had posted a video about me. He said he loved me, he had seen something that I had said, and he wanted to interview with me. By that night, Sunday, April 16th, 2023, Bam was at my house. I was wholly unprepared to do a podcast interview with Bam Margera to say the least. But I did have about two hours or so to prepare. And so what you're going to see in this podcast is what we could come up with. I tried my best. I did my best. And I really wanted to give Bam a voice so that he could just say what he thought. Bam was brought to my house by two people in a white car. I walked outside to greet him when he came and he walked up alone and the other two people stayed at the car. It was a man and a woman. When he walked up to me, he was not carrying any cup, any drink, anything like that. And from what I could tell in my estimation of just meeting him for the very first time, he didn't seem to be under the influence of anything. In my opinion, I'm not an expert. I really, honestly, I truly can't speak to what, if anything, was going on with that. But I will say, in my opinion, he seemed coherent. He definitely was able to hold conversation. He was charismatic, funny. It didn't seem like he was on any substances to me. I really don't know, though. But he certainly was not holding any cup or bottle or anything like that when he walked up to me. So something else that Bam kept reiterating over and over and over and over again was that he had never heard of me until that day. He had never seen any of my content until that day. And as soon as he saw it, he wanted to meet up. I don't know if that's true, but that is what Bam said. So I just want to be very clear about that. I don't know what, if anything, in this interview that you're about to watch is true. I'm not here to determine what's true or not true in this particular case. In this particular video, I just wanted Bam to be able to say what he wanted to say, but I'm not vouching for it as facts. I don't know. I Obviously, I've not had time to investigate any of his allegations or accusations as of yet. And I want to address a couple points that I know people are going to have questions and comments about before we get started. Unfortunately, Bam is back to drinking again. And by the time we did sit down and start the interview, someone did bring him a cup. And in that cup, I am assuming it was alcohol. I do not know 
what alcohol was in the cup. And I have seen people giving a little bit of criticism saying, BJ, me, should not have interviewed Bam if she knew he was drinking. I appreciate the criticism and I appreciate your concern and your opinion. It's just not my opinion. Um, I believe that journalism is about the truth. And the truth is that on the night of April 16th, 2023, Bam Margera was drinking. I saw a couple of people say, and again, I respect their opinions, that I should have waited until Bam was sober or until Bam was no longer drinking or until he had recovered or was in active recovery from alcohol before I interviewed him. He publicly asked me to interview him. And quite frankly, I have no idea when or if ever again I would ever be able to speak with him. It's no secret that Bam has been, according to him, locked up against his will with no access to a phone or internet or any outside communication for the larger, greater majority of the last two years. So for those reasons, I made the decision to go ahead and interview Bam on April 16th, 2023. What you are about to see is that interaction. To be honest, I was nervous. I'm nervous even recording this right now because since that interview, people close to Bam, including blood relatives, have made horrendous and inappropriate accusations about and toward me, including Bam's own brother insinuating or questioning whether I provided Bam with illegal substances. Let the record reflect. I did absolutely no such thing. And I would never, ever do such a thing. So I went back and forth on whether to even show y'all the parts of the interview where Bam was drinking because of these ridiculous and stupid allegations against me. I feel like it would be hypocritical of me to not include the full truth. About 30 or 60 seconds of total footage has been deleted from this interview for reasons that I can divulge later, but I'm not at liberty to discuss them right now. Now, after this interview that y'all are about to see, Bam did come back to my house one more time where we sat for two additional sessions of interviews. So total, there will be three of these podcast style interview episodes that will come out about Bam Margera. Bam in these interviews was saying that he wanted to come for 10 sessions, but as of right now, I know for sure that these three exist, they have been recorded, and they will be coming out. In this interview, I did the best that I could. Upon re-watching the interview, there are things that I wish I had done differently. There are things I will do differently if I have the opportunity to interview anybody else, but it's not really on my radar right now. This is what you get. I mean, this is the best I could do with the very little prep that I was allowed. Without further ado, what you're going to watch now is that first interview from that very first night. Facts and defamation. Love you, Munich. Bye. That's what I heard. Oh, this is silly little maniac. Funny story. That's what your brother called me. Yes, I've seen the videos from the silly little maniac. She has no idea what she's talking about. I don't know. So I sold stickers that said still, silly little maniac All for right. the free BAM cause. Can you both give me three claps? Yeah. <laughs> Should I rock them? Yeah. Yes. Yes, hold oh, this yes. one. We're we just ready. broke the internet with that one. Whoo, the Reddit forums are gonna not know what to do. <laughs> Here, do you need more? No, no, I'm good. Okay. Bam Margera, the man, the myth, the legend, in my humble abode, that surprise witness BJ investigates studios productions right here where it all happens. This is pretty surreal to actually have you in this room. I kept kind of thinking like, oh, this isn't, it's not going to happen. We're not going to be, nah, something's going to happen. It's not, Lima's going to show up with some cops, some crazy shit. But Bam Margera is here as of right now, no cops. So thank you for being here, Bam. Well, you're welcome. But I've been put away for like a year and a half with no internet, no music. No, do you know that I had to use my every time? Like I couldn't even use it. But I'm just saying, I had no music, no interweb, no nothing for a year and a half. As soon as I got out, I was like outside of Starbucks with my buddy. I was like, I can't believe this. And I went to the beach. I was like, the beach. Like I've been locked up. So. What happened when you would try to leave? When I would try to leave, mm -hmm. 
Well, then I get Baker acted again. Mm -hmm. So it was all in Florida this was happening. Yeah, it was, it's called the Florida Shuffle. So let's rewind a little bit. And I am the definition of the Florida Shuffle because the judge said they've never seen anybody get shuffled this hard. I got shuffled 11 times, 90 days, 90 days, 90 days, 90 days. And what would happen right uh, toward the end of $1,300 every days. night. Can you flip this coin? If it lands on heads, it's tell the truth day, say whatever I want day. And if it lands on tails, then there's certain things like I'm not allowed to talk about. I gotta flip the coin. Yeah. All right. I think it's gone. It's on. Oh, it's on heads. Look at that. Yeah, but you have to flip it and everything. Oh, you just did. Just flip it. Uh, yeah. Oh, it flipped. It's heads. Just go like this and make it land on this. <laughs> it is heads. Oh, all right. Yeah, so it's heads. Wait, now me, with there's all these minute. files, all these files. Was it really heads? Well, yeah. You want it? It is heads. Heads, heads! All these files she has that I have not seen before. What do you think I, that? I've, I've been here for like four hours now, and I said we can't start the interview yet until I read some of these things. Okay, so you what do you want to do? We have the, t the... I don't know where to start. There's too much to talk about. Let's talk about the Arizona conservatorship. All right, let's go. Here you go. <laughs> what do you want me to do? You can you? look at any it's of gonna it. It's going to take forever. Well, so I got, I got time. Well, how about you just ask me a question and I'll answer it. <laughs> how did, in Arizona... I, okay, so I saw a video of you and people characterize it as ranting and raving and whatever. But what you said in this... When you've been through what I've been through, yes, it is a rant because I have a lot to say. But I don't know anything about this free band movement whatsoever. And because I, I couldn't have the interweb. So I just didn't ever care to look. But somebody showed me today at Carrie Getz's house who lives in Cherry Hill, which is... I didn't know where you lived, but I was like, this... Chick knows a lot of information. What was it that and then, you heard and then that you Jack were like, this Tillery is it. said Jack Tillery said, Bam, she lives in Philadelphia. I'm like, what? Get a hold of her then. I spoke I'll to be him in my way. Today. Yeah, yeah. So what did you hear me say today in the clip that you were like, wait, there's something here I need to know? What do you remember what piece of information you were like? It doesn't matter what information it is, remember? is what it was. Yeah, I remember everything. But is what it was was when I say certain things. You have an editor zoom in your face and be like, <laughs> which means that like, you know what I'm saying. I, I, I think I do. Yeah. So but you're you don't, on my level. So you don't really know anything about the free band movement. I've heard you say I, that. I, I know nothing about it at all. What happens when you've tried to find stuff out about it? I don't, I never have. I don't care. You don't care? No. Yeah. It hasn't really been on your radar. Really. No, but I'll tell you anything. If you ask me a question about anything that happened, I'll tell you about it. But you know, I've never cared enough to. So, there's so much fun body cam footage of me f the police and being arrested for no fucking reason and all this lot. shit that you know there is a lot of body camera I'm have you seen any of that than puff daddy i can tell you that <laughs> have you seen any of the lawsuit i mean have you seen any of the body camera footage no none of it no so tell me about which body camera footage I do not have is the Arizona arrest. That was phenomenal. But is what was very funny is when I got arrested at a Thai restaurant, they handcuffed me, they broke my hand, it's still broken. Look at that finger. It the finger's looks rough. broken as Put it up to the camera. Yeah, and, and this is broken right here as well. How'd that happen? They handcuffed the shit out of me for no reason. So I did see some footage of you at the Thai restaurant from the inside. Yeah. And it looks like you were being a little bit aggressive some might say well i was larried up what does that mean it means i went to chris siegel's house i was at the roosevelt and it was 2 a.m i was like i should probably go to bed he's like no let's go over my house i'm like nah i should probably go to bed he's like no let's go over my house so i went over his house had a few more white claws and then it's time to meet fiends again when we just had a phenomenal day together mm -hmm. phenomenal day nikki met me at the barracks with phoenix it was phenomenal and um then i took phoenix which is a funny story about I take care of this eight-year-old girl named she was born in but <clears throat> she's mine I live with her mm -hmm. so she was like better not be there she was upstairs at the barracks playing with Legos but she really wanted to be downstairs skateboarding and she was she really wanted to meet Phoenix so after I talked to Nikki for a little bit and it, an hour went by I'm like you know what I just got this brand new ring from the shaman it says in Arabic, tell the truth, patience, patience. So mm -hmm. I was like, Nikki, I got to say, I know you didn't want to be here, but she's upstairs playing Legos because I paid Destin Dern 400 bucks to drive, to follow me 
deliver the car that you always wanted that you made me wait four hours in Burbank for, which was very embarrassing and very frustrating and very rude. Finally, um, Destin's girlfriend babysits when Jessica's at work. So Jessica was at work. And then, so I'm like, so Destin and his girlfriend drove me up here. They followed me to give you this car. Now I have to go back with them, but she had to babysit. So she upstairs. She really wants to meet Phoenix. She's like, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> they hit it off. I've seen Phoenix like have play dates and they have fun, but they, Phoenix were like two peas in a pod. I've never seen anything like it. And we're skipping down the street on Hollywood Boulevard. Like one, two, three and jump. One, two, three and jump. I saw that video. I turn around and Nikki is just has this resting Holding bitch her face. Cheetah cardigan. And, and I go, what is the problem, Nikki? And she goes, it's just one big happy family. I'm like, well, what's, what's wrong, wrong with that? that? What's wrong with that? You want to be one big miserable family? Yes, what the fuck? she does clearly. No, no, it's just, you know, it's just one big happy family. I thought, I'm like, well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Some people just thrive in chaos. They just need it. I feel like if you think that you've been, I've been scorned. I've been betrayed. I've been backstabbed. I can't even sleep on my back because there's been so many knives in it. You know what I noticed about Nikki? And I don't know if you noticed this. I'm sure you did. But it's always right at the same time you're getting a restraining order put on you yeah. or you're getting put in another guardianship. She's filing shit across the country in California on Phoenix. That's happened twice. Right. right. She filed for custody and child support one day, one single day mm -hmm. before Lima filed to put you in a guardianship. Well, she's been brainwashed by country. her brother Warren. And I told her when I get out of here in Florida, I've been here for a hundred and I've been for a year and a half, $1,300 a night, $660,000 that your brother has a signature on the Baker Act that put me here. Mm -hmm. She goes, it must have been Ford's. I'm like, it wasn't Ford's, but whatever. And then I'm like, look, when I get out, I will move to anywhere on the planet with you except Los Angeles. I have those so, papers who signed them, actually. So after three months, I go, I'll pay for your place. I'm like, she, I got a place. Oh, congratulations. Where? She goes, Burbank. I'm like, Nikki. You told her you didn't Bur like Burbank. Burbank is Los Angeles. Van Nuys is Los Angeles. Santa Monica is Los Angeles. Culver City is Los Angeles. Boyle Heights is Los Angeles. It's all Los Angeles. You move to where I can't go, and it's right next to your brother. You pick your brother over me. I'm leaving. Goodbye. And every time she sees me with a cute girl, she's like, you packed her, didn't you? And I didn't. And I'm like, no, I didn't. You packed her. If, like, if you keep telling me that I fucked her 13 times and I'm going to go do it because we keep getting blamed for it, then I'm going to go do it. Yeah. So finally I fly in Jessica too. from Milwaukee and she's like, you flew in a girl from Milwaukee and you're taking her eight-year-old to Disneyland? I'm like, yeah. She's like, did you fuck her? I'm like, yeah. She's like, what, 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 what? You did? I'm like, yeah. She's like, how many times? <laughs> like once or twice? I'm like, no, like 1,300 or 14 billion. I can't even count anymore. These are all of the different times with police reports. Right here, I have a Stephen B. Timmer one. This one's actually from... That's Stephen Timmer. Mm. So, so here's... Oh, my God. This I have so, the police call, too. I'm going to get overwhelmed I have the call. right now. Do you want to hear the call of Stephen yeah, Timmer? The 911 call? Stephen Timmer was such a drunk piece of shit that he decided to get sober, and then he wanted to be an interventionist, and you know he found out how much bar? money I have. And he, they said, at the court of the judge said... This is his ninth extension of the Baker Act. This is the most of ever of a Florida shuffle that we've ever seen in ever. So then Steve Timmer transferred it from Pinellas County to some other county in, in uh, Jupiter. It was Florida. in Hillsborough first, and then it went to So a Pinellas. new Jupiter judge didn't know about the nine. <gasps> she thought it was the first. So then I had to do it again. Because she didn't know about it. Right. This is but, starting but judge, to add the, the up. The girl in the Pinellas County, the judge, was like, this, look, he gets out on July 17th, and that is that, and I don't give a fuck anymore. Yes, I was heavily involved in Free Bam at that time. He's and getting out. I don't care if, if he jumped the wall and whatever. He's getting out. It, it, this is the ninth time of an extension. This is the most Florida shuffle we've ever shuffled with anybody. So how do you feel about all of that? I feel like, like I want to knock Steve Timmer out because I did 90 days at, it's called the refuge in Ocala National Forest. And I had 88 days. I had like two days left. I flicked a cigarette out into a bush. You were trying bush. to burn down the endangered forest. They filmed the bush smoking like <laughs> any cigarette would. It was not on fire, but because it's in Ocala National Forest, it was a bush in the field 
And they said I could have lit the whole national forest on fire. There is no way, if it was on fire, which it wasn't, could catch onto the forest. So I had to do another 90 days at another place. So then I went to Life Skills, and then is what I did there was, <laughs> they say this, I, I, I did 85 days. I had five days left. I would have been out. Steve Timmer goes, boom, you've been rocking the same shorts for like eight days now. I'm like, yes, yeah, so what? He's like, well, that's bad hygiene. I'm like, I'm not trying to get any pussy around here. I don't give a f and plus, I jump in the pool, so, you know, they're washed, kind of. How long had you been wearing the the pants? These pants? No, the ones that Those you allegedly... Days. Yeah, so he so he was like, you've been wearing the same pants for eight days, so you have to go for 90 more days because... Because of because bad what? hygiene. Because of bad hygiene. And Stephen Timmer's the one that made that call, not yeah. the facility. Well, guess what? I've been wearing these pants for 33 days. Somebody call the police. This man is bad at hygiene. Oh, should I get back to, uh, <laughs> should I go back to treatment? No, I'm just yeah, no, and this shirt I've been wearing for 45 days. You know, I saw a comment on one of your posts today. Somebody said, "Does do you ever do you have any other shirts?" So maybe you can answer that question. Well, no, is, he's been wearing that one for 40 days. This shirt given to me by Danny Way and I'm not going to take it off because it fits me perfect and I don't give a but if you have a washing machine, I'll take off my shirt after this interview. You can wash it, and I'll put it back on. You're more than welcome to my washing machine. That'd be very kind. Mi casa es su casa, as right they well. say somewhere. I like that. Oh, we got our handshake. Oh, man. Take that, haters. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about how, what happened in Arizona. I saw a video said you got knocked over the head with a bottle. That's, That's true. true? Yeah. All right. 100%. Tell me about that. All right. So... <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> so surprise, surprise, I'm in Sarasota, and it's my brother with Joe DeVito from MTV who who did all the Viva La Bam stuff. Okay. The producer. DeVito. Joe DeVito. Oh, DeVito. Okay. So I meet them right near the airport bar. They get a gin and tonic, so do I. We start chit-chatting, and then they say, Bam, we want you to go to a treatment center. I'm like, well, you're drinking right now. And as a matter of fact, I showed up at Aunt Missy's house on 12 white claws when I showed up and she's narrowed it down to now two. This is about June 2001. Yeah, and, and so I was there for about three weeks. And, and Tremaine to had two. just put a restraining order out on you just now. Yeah, because I said I was burning his house down. Were you going to burn his house down? No, it's just, it's just saying I, I f***ing mad at you. It's like when you said I'm going to jump How can I bridge? burn your house down if I'm in Florida and you live in Los Angeles? That's the question I'm wondering. Well, he's such a p that he had to file a restraining order. Well, see, my conspiracy He's such a theory, that, that everybody can get f with on the jackass set at any given moment, any even moment. during lunchtime. Yeah. But you have to sign a contract that says Jeff can't because he's the director. So get hurt in action. Ow, I got bitten by a shark by you, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Woo. Get hurt in action, you. Get hurt in action, get hurt in action. Let me collect all the money. So here's my conspiracy theory. Yeah. It's a con total conspiracy theory, okay? Maybe it isn't. Well, here we are. You know, you'd let me know. I kind of think it's possible that people jeff tremaine in particular did this restraining order thing because they knew that just a couple days later somebody named i don't know possibly lima yavrimovich maybe somebody else was gonna be having these papers ready signed sealed and ready to go to say look how unhinged this crazy person is look he's a crazy reality star and he has schizophrenia and look he's threatening little girls and doesn't that just give them a lot of ammo to use against you in this Arizona thing just a week later or whatever? It's just about... I'm just a crazy if, no, conspiracy theorist. No, if, theorist, if, you call, if you call and file a random complaint quickly and it's on document, so now if I'm ever in front of a court with a judge, then they're going to see just a laundry list of things that are nonsense, but it looks like a whole bunch of stuff. And that's what I've look been at, Look at what he's done. He did this, that, and the other thing, and the other thing, and the other thing, and the other thing. He's crazy. And he's so crazy. He's unhinged. I'm scared for my life. And you know what? If everybody who comes up to you and they say, hey, BJ, how are you doing? You're like, I'm good. Really? Is that what you really? want to keep telling yourself? Yeah. You want to keep telling yourself that? No, I'm actually doing good. Is that what you want to keep telling yourself? If everybody keeps doing that, you're going to either be like, get the fuck away from me or, or you're going to get confused. It would, be, it would make me this? feel like I was going crazy even though I knew I wasn't. I was. <laughs> and especially because... I was on 18 different medications mm -hmm. from Paramount, or not Paramount, Dick House, because they're dick heads. Yeah. And it goes on and on. Bipropion, Propanolol, Trazodone, Seroquel, Lithium. Did you find I was that any a of that was helping zombie. you? 
Hell no. I was a zombie. No, I couldn't no. even f*** my own wife. I was going bald. I was getting fat because of weight gain. Mm -hmm. Stiff muscles. I couldn't skateboard. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do anything fun. If I woke up, it was to go to the refrigerator and eat or fall asleep again. I was a zombie. And I don't know why, but they also made in the contract that I can't leave the state of Pennsylvania. I live on the border of Delaware, one mile right. away. It's tax-free shopping. That's where I go grocery shopping. Right. So technically, if I went grocery shopping in Delaware, I broke my contract and I can't get the millions that I and get. And you also couldn't go to like your Comic-Con appearances. Like they right. were kind of restricting your way to even make and money. They, they, they made me pay for it all. So... If you want me to pay 90 grand for wavelengths, then I have to do that. If you want me to pay $800 a session for the therapist twice a week, I got to pay for that. $800? $800 for neurofeedback. All this medication from Heather Hayes from Atlanta, doctor. Mm -hmm. And then um, Michael, then I had, then they would. Why then, do you then, have to pay Heather Hayes? Didn't she like then a I had transportation? To pay nine, then Paramount would take nine grand off of my, my salary a month of all this doctor bullshit. So, <clears throat> so. And every day, my phone would randomly beep, 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 beep. If I was camping with my son and it beeps, I got to cancel the cancel. I got to cancel the camping trip. I got to go to an urgent care and piss and see if it's hot. Right, right. I had to breathe into a sober link three times a day. And if I'm late, then, you know, they would usually get pissed, but I would do it. So all this was going on. One time on. I blew o -L -L one or whatever. And they're like, boom, what the fuck? You're o -L -L one. And they're like, what's that in the background? I'm like, that? Well, that's a kombucha. They're like, oh, kombucha. That could set it off. I'm like, so now I can't have a kombucha all this they tortured me and they didn't know that covid would happen mm. so they thought we were going to film the movie right away and then covid yeah. just automatically happened and they're all thinking like we'll be filming in a week all right we'll be filming so in two weeks we'll be filming in three i waited two years doing their bullshit that i stopped doing it because i was like what's the point of getting five million dollars if i'm six feet in the ground that's right i'll yeah. be dead so what do i care right that's why I want to fuck Knoxville up. I see red. You get into a ring with me, I now f you up. Jeff Jermaine's too much of a to get into the ring. So you have double dog there, Johnny yeah, Knoxville. Boxing gloves are Publicly. pointless. Ding, ding, ding. You're over with. Would you do it with you're the boxing over. gloves? It's if pointless. It's a way? waste of time. There's, no, I, there's no pads. You're dead. I don't want to be dead. No Mr. pads. Margera. No pads. Yeah, you. <laughs> you're scaring me. I'm getting scared. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> so all this was going on with the checking in and the, what was that man's name? The one you were checking in with. I ain't no wizard. What are you, what are you talking about? What there man? was a man who was in charge. Checking I got in the way somewhere. When you were in that wellness agreement. Wellness agreement. Whenever Johnny Knoxville, Jeff Tremaine, and the other one, Spike or whoever, came to your rehab and were yeah, like, yeah. sign this. And you were like, I don't want to sign. <laughs> so what I'm, do you mean? I'm like so in debt with this shit. And then they find out that I went to Rhode Island on a sober road trip with Novak and Andy Roy. Uh -huh. And then uh, I tested positive for Adderall because I was a zombie with all this 18 medications. Mm -hmm. So because I tested positive for Adderall and I was in Rhode Island, now I'm out of state on Adderall. I just go back into a rehab that I had paid for. Mm hmm and then then they decided I'm not going to be in the movie anymore. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was just, it's the definition of f***ing torture. It seemed like it. It was, that was the first thing I saw that made me think, you know, I, I didn't really watch Jackass and stuff. I was like a little bit more of a girly girl and all that. So I, I had a, some, obviously you couldn't really be alive and not know what Jackass was. It was a well, cultural because phenomenon. Jeff Tremaine lives in Los Angeles. He does all the MTV meetings so he can make all these side deals because I've seen me do it with Viva La Band. Mm -hmm. So, when he's there, he makes all these... When me and him, he used CKY 1 and 2 to create Jackass with a bit of... He did. So when it's an MTV special, what created Jackass? Big, 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 big brother. And then there's two minutes of CKY. It's like, you mother... If you even get me in a ring with Jeff Tremaine, it would go like this. Ding, you're dead. I don't have to yeah, touch Yeah, he looks like a little soft. Ding, you're dead. Knoxville, you're done. Knoxville, you're done. Tremaine, ding, you're just done. In the ring. In only. the ring. With no boxing gloves, because I don't have time for that. I think you're going to have to do boxing gloves if you get him in there. He's too much of a f Even if Conor McGregor said, I have $40 million for you to step in the ring with Bam Margera, he will still be, oh, he'll probably go break his hand and be like, well, I got a broken hand. What am I supposed to do now? Conor McGregor? No, no, no. Knoxville would be like, shit. Oh. Well, I would do it, but I got a broken his hand. Yeah, because you put a brick on it mm -hmm. real quick. So tell me about what happened in Arizona. 
So you got hit in the head with a bottle. Well, How'd let me that, get, let me get there. So, like I was talking about, Jess, my brother, showing up in Florida with Joe DeVito. They said, Ben, you should go to rehab. I'm like, but I'm down to two White Claws. I was on 12, but Aunt Missy got me down to two. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm good. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, dude, if you go to this rehab, Iggy Pop wants to do an interview with uh, Nikki Six, followed by, uh, I'm like, really? Billy Idol? What? Really? All right. You know what? That sounds like a good deal. So I get there, and now it's, uh, what do you call it? Like, one of those holidays, it starts with an M. I don't know. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Oh, At Memorial Scottsdale. Memorial so it's going off Memorial the hook. Memorial Day, yes. So now there's business bikinis all over the place walking around. I'm like, DeVito, Jess, we got to have one night out before I do this. Like, all right, yeah, let's do it. So we have one night out. Shot, 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 shot. They're getting loaded too, just like me. And then we wind up at the strip club. And I met this girl. I said... No, we met her at the pool party. And she's like, I'm a stripper. I'm like, you are? Rock and roll. Where at? And she's like, Alaska something. I'm like, Alaska something. All right. I'll come and visit you because you're working at eight. If you have purple lingerie, then blah, 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 blah. She's like, I'll wear purple lingerie, this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, all right, we're going. So then we get there. And then at this point, she's like, I have this boat. And I want to take you out on it in the morning. I'm like, cool, I'm supposed to go to rehab in the morning, but I'll do the boat and then I'll go to rehab. Uh-huh. All right, cool. So <laughs> the next morning I go on the, I tell DeVito and Jess, I'm like, Jess, I agreed, DeVito, I agreed to go in, but she's going to take me out on this boat and I love boats. She's got a speed boat and I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. And you're, you two are welcome as well, but that's what I'm going to do. They're like, bam, it's time to go. I'm like, I, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm definitely going with her. And Nikki probably thinks I fucked her on the boat. No, I just like the a boat and it happened to be a stripper whatever but um because that happened DeVito was like you need to turn around and I'm with the stripper in the car and they're trying to make me turn around and then he's like turn around now and the stripper goes to listen to him and I just take the wheel and I go nope we're going this way mm-hmm. they tried to say I grabbed the wheel and it was a high speed fucking big donut on the highway it was just nope we're going this way but maybe we should I did grab, grab the wheel wheels. though yeah maybe maybe we shouldn't maybe grab not. wheels but it was yeah. it was just simply that okay it wasn't quite there what was they no made it out there was no donut there was no half of a wreck so so that's the story that you're told as to why you got arrested because you pulled oh, the wheel oh it gets better so okay so now because DeVito and Jess said he went on the boat with the girl and we don't even know what lake they're at so so they both left and went back home so now i'm all on my own with this stripper Mm -hmm. and i drink so many white claws that um by the time i show up at her house we started to kiss and i was like going to have my way with her but i wound up pissing her bed because i was so hammered and then she threw an apple at me so then i left and then i asked some dude where am i at because i didn't know where i was and he saw my cell phone he took it and bashed me over the head with a corona bottle so now i'm all bloody so then i just Get into a fucking, maybe an Uber, I guess. I can't remember. But mm-hmm. I went to the Ritz car. No, I went to whatever it was. It was right next to the mall. And um, it was like a Four Seasons or some shit. But I checked in with this bloody head. And then when I got in there, I reached in my pocket and I found all these that f- somebody must have gave me. And I ate them all. And you're mm-hmm. not supposed to do And that. you don't even like f- That's what you nah. said to the Pinellas cops. I don't like weed. I, you do I, like I don't really like weed, but are okay i would if you gave me 10 million dollars i would never try not in a million years what about ibogaine what the hell is ibogaine it's a it's like a similar to the five vimeo thing and it's supposed to be real good for like addiction i, I it like cures addiction immediately i, I only like white shoes. well i think it is comes from you know like a tree or something i have never done it no but adderall is what i was on and that's I had not a white that's blue no orange. No, but it, depends which one you're like, taking. But I was I was on it for 14 years. How, how? It helps, right? Because Knoxville would give it to me. When I was a pro skater, I did not drink whatsoever. I mm. didn't smoke cigarettes. I didn't do any pills, not at all. Uh huh. And he's he's eating these things like M and M's, and he's like, "Boom, you want them?" I'm like, "No, boom, you want eating? No. Adderall. Adderall." And he would take Xanax to go to bed. So then I was like, "You know what? Give me one." So I took one. And I liked it. And then the next day, I'm like, Knoxville, give me another one. Knoxville, give me another one. But do you think that you did derive so a medical got, benefit from Adderall? I think it can help. 
Well, all that I know is that I went to rehab for Adderall and alcohol. Yeah. At least I was out and about chit-chatting with you, having a good old time. Mm -hmm. I go into rehab, I'm on more medication than I've ever been. I'm on 18 medications. I can't even... I can't even skate. I'm gaining weight. I'm losing my hair. Can't I'm a listen zombie. To music. Honestly, I could... found that to be so offensive that you it... couldn't pick your own music. Well, I think that's such well, an important like thing. Like Lil Wayne, we have the same fucking birthday, and he has tattooed "I am music." Well, so am I. Yeah, we should write a song. Yeah, well, we were born on the same day and the same birth date. I was born in the same month. But as he's from New Orleans. And I'm from Philadelphia. I like Lil Wayne. One of my favorite songs is one he did with. Uh, he did a feature on a Sia. LSD, you know the band LSD with Sia and Diplo and Labyrinth? I know. But Lil Wayne, Wayne has my favorite track on there. I'm my favorite feature. I am there. music. You're right, Lil Wayne. You are music. And they took Rick your Rouse, music away from Ace you. Hood, Lil Bam, Yellow Wolf, NF. So tell me how MGK, it is. Eminem is the big time. Yeah, but, he's, yeah. I mean, we could go on and on with this. Big Wah. <laughs> And that's just rap. If you want to talk about rock and roll, Lacrimus Profunde, Anathema, it goes on and on. Tokyo Hotel, let's go. I heard of them. And Eminem and MGK. I haven't heard a lot of them ones you just said. Well, I'll have to have a listen. Well, MGK Sorry. has a jackass tattoo, so I have an MGK tattoo. To... Have you seen his movie? I watched it on the plane the other day. I couldn't he has a lot it. of movies. Oh, it's the one about, uh, well, Megan Fox is in it. And he's like, uh, he's like, what's the name of that damn movie? Morning. Good morning. Spelled with a U. I don't think I've... Last year. I haven't locked up. I haven't seen a lot. But I did see one that he just did. I forget the name of it, but I loved it. Okay, good. Good. He's very talented, that MGK. He got into it with Eminem. People had to pick sides. Well... All right, let's go. (laughs) If you listen to me... I'm listening. Eminem is the motherfucking shit. There's no doubt about it. Giant heart, a gram. Giant heart, a gram. But... Rap Devil, I was there in Newark, Delaware, or not Newark, Newark, New Jersey. That's close. When when MGK did that, when he did that video, Rap Devil, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, (sighs) dude, if you put this out, it's gonna go two ways. It's gonna go big time, yeah, 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 or Eminem (laughs) might come back and. Can crush you. I don't know, but this is very, <laughs> very, very <laughs> risky. Very risky. He's like, Fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. I'm like, all right, let's go. So he did it. <clears throat> and you know, there's so many Eminem fans, and I'm the biggest Eminem fan. But if you listen to MGK, there are 33 facts that he says and questions that he does not answer. Eminem. He trails off on a man bun. So what? And then he trails off about what cereal is eating. And the, yeah, what kind of cereal? Who cares? It's Frosted Flakes or Fruit Who gives a fuck? Mm-hmm. Answer my question. Why did I'm not on Shady 45 because of you? Why you shelf me like Paul Rosenberg? Answer my questions. He didn't answer any of that. Then he starts trailing off about Taylor Swift or Britney Spears. And then if you want to fuck him, then you can wear my flannel. He doesn't need a flannel. He's fucking Megan Fox. He's very happy with himself. I think they broke up or something recently. Well, who cares? He can fuck anything that moves, MGK. At this point, probably. What do you All he has to do is walk 22? down the street. Adam 22, thoughts? Who's Adam 22? Exactly, exactly. Moving on. Who's that? <laughs> he's um he's a big he he so he's a podcaster. He started out in the BMX scene and um Great then, story, BJ. Can you tell me that one again? It's it's uh told you that we could move on. You Why are we wasting happen? time on Adam tw- who? Because he's getting high key canceled right now and he had a lot of this type he of topics. Lima on his show. He did have Lima on his show. That also happened. <laughs> Yeah. Money bag, yo. No, I mean, same. Okay, so I have these, I have actually have the papers that they told the court in Arizona while all that's going on. And I can show you what what they were saying. And... You said you have body cam footage. Let's take a look. I don't from Arizona. Well, let me see any kind of body cam footage. Okay, so yeah, I I have your mom on body camera footage. Well, my mom is banned from the castle. And I said, you can't come over because I took her on Dr. Phil Mm -hmm. because she's a manipulator and she'll call my friends. So say you came over my house at Castle Bam and I'm having things go on and she has your phone number. She goes, BJ, don't tell Bam, but what's going on over there? So now you're forced to either lie to me or tell her the truth or lie to her. Well, there's a girl sipping on Corona by the pool. There's some dude smoking weed over there. All right, but don't tell Bam. She... 
So she did it again after Dr. Phil and said, don't tell Bam Jessica, but you have to switch the flight because TMZ is all over the place. And I'm like, they're not in San Diego. She's lying. It was a ruse to get Lima and f- Jesse Ray and f- Brandon Cliff, who they flew in, and Beaver Fleming. I love them all, but they they came in for an intervention at the shaman's house. He does not want his f- address one bit to be shared. It, it was so rude what they did. And my mom was like, Bam, I had nothing to do with it. You had everything to do with it. You f-ing made her change the flight because you knew they were coming. Okay, so... I've never seen any of this shit. I have, this is, I'll just have to you know, transfer this to you because it's a lot. But I remember whatever the body cam footage is is fucking funny because I, whenever I say anything, I fucking mean it. I have no filter. And I don't lie. Unless I'm telling you that I'm lying. Okay, let's just start here. This is the, this one's labeled number 10, but they go in backwards order. As my mom is sipping on a vodka and, and ginger out. ale, just like me. I said, give me a vodka and ginger ale. Who She's bought like, you that? Who bought that for you? Because you had just April got... did. Because you didn't have your debit card. No, I did Yeah, you're right. Because you had my just got hits, hits. And she's like, I'll just follow his lead. And then the police were like, Ape, why, were you, why are you drinking with your son who's in rehab? They She's sure like, did. I'm just super frustrated. And I, Ape, I don't think Ape drinks very much. My dad doesn't drink whatsoever, ever. Because he gets gout if he does drink, and he doesn't even like it anyway. He just likes cheesesteaks and hoagies and pizzas. You're... So the police are already there. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hold on. What the fuck? What do they want? Lima called, Lima called on there? Lima called and said Lima you had escaped. Lima called and I escaped. And she was getting you priming the pump so you would be hopefully drunk by the time they got there. So you would seem drunk. So she could say she was scared. Maybe she told my mom to have a drink with me. She may to have. keep me there. April said she was babysitting you to keep you from going crazy. Babysit. Look at me. Do I look like I need no, babysitting? No. I'm you sitting there annoyed. writing something down. I was sitting at the bar writing something down. You were minding I wasn't your business. Caught, I was minding my fucking business. Look at I'm still minding Let my know business. I don't you need a break. I don't. Okay. I'm still minding my business. Yeah, no, you did this wonderfully. You handled it. So they sent it to me like why, this. Why, why did it shut because off? Because it's your private information and they won't give it to the public. So some of it is missing like this. Well, I can read my own lips. Okay. I said they called police. Okay. And then they forgot the number of 911. So then. Do you remember interacting with these people? Yes, like, 100%. What was I remember everything. Mind? The last time I blacked out was 2013. So what was I going remember through your mind everything. at this moment? Is what's going through my mind is why did I go to a hotel close to life skills? Yeah. Because you knew it was what was about to happen. Because I I hopped the wall before and they were circling and circling and circling. Luckily, I have a very recognizable face. So as soon as I wrote, it was like a comfort or some shit. Derek Williams. No, some dude from Kansas. uh, But he was there to do some construction work. Derek Williams had called on you. I don't know know who Derek Williams is, but. At life skills. The counselor. The, the. Right. But I met this dude at Comfort Inn. And he was from Kansas. He's like, I'm here doing construction. Are you Bam Marjorie? I'm like, yeah, I have to hide. He's like, come on in. He's like, do you want any like vodka or ginger ale? I'm like, that's my favorite drink. So then I hid in there and I looked out the window watching Life Skills fans just trickle. Uh, 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 uh. But then this is the second time I did yeah, it. Yeah, this is like So I should have been more wise, kinda... you know. I should have went to a further away one. The guy was telling you he didn't have the number to 911. You were like, it's nine, then a one, then a one. So Dude, like, I would call 911, but I don't know the number to it. Well, it's 911. No, yeah. I'll just call the police station and ask what the number is. <laughs> so that, they block this out. See, I can, I can see what I'm saying, but it's going to so take a minute. So you've seen this. Let me show you what you have not seen. Because, I mean, you were there. I you heard my mom was uh, sabotaged me. 
I want to see that at the same day. The same day. I yeah, know, she sabotaged me. Right yeah. There's and that's when she's so good at bam. I do not say that. Is what I said. You're going to like the think this is the one where she gets called out by the cop. He's like, oh, he was on the run, but you're the one who picked him up. I think I think this is the one. It's 12 okay. minutes long. This one for editing well, maybe purposes. Maybe we shorten it and get right to the point. The number seven video. Let me see. If, let me make sure it is first. And then we'll see, is what? It. Hold on. Hit pause. Okay. Is what you have is big news because I could have done an interview with you and we could have talked, 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 but you have proof of everything. So what are you going to say when you're caught red handed? Well, they're going to say I'm crazy. Like that's what they've been saying. But you're caught red handed. Yeah. What are you going to say now? I'm going to say Oga Boga. I'm smoking a cigarette. Yayama rise. Let's go. Intermission. Yayama rise. Intermission. Bye. Love you. Mean it. And that was basically what we got on that first day. As I noted at the beginning of this interview, Bam was eventually presented with a cup. I do assume that there was alcohol in that cup. And by the end of the interview, it did seem as though Bam might be under the influence of alcohol, a.k.a. drunk. He never did anything that led me to believe that he was consuming illegal or illicit substances. The main takeaways that I left this interview with were that Bam is adamant that he never heard of me or the free BAM movement while he was in rehab or at any point until very recently. He also did seem very appreciative, grateful, thankful. When he saw with his own eyes my files and all of the work that I had done, the body camera footage that I'd pulled together for his case, and he did even ask me, why did you do this? And I told him the truth. It just felt like the right thing to do. After what I'd seen with Free Britney, after what I'd seen even in this case with all the contradictions between what TMZ was reporting and what the public records showed, it felt like someone needed to investigate and it felt like it had to be me. And that is the truth. He came back on Wednesday, which was three days after Sunday when he first came. Wednesday is the last time I saw Bam. He did invite himself back for more interviews since Wednesday, but I declined and said that I had other stuff going on and maybe we would be able to get together in the future, but I had already had plans. So after Wednesday, I never saw Bam again. So in the next installation of this podcast series, we will discuss Bam's freedom, the Florida shuffle, Bam's Instagram posts, his guardian, and he did end the very last podcast session by calling his parents. Again, I debated whether or not to even tell y'all that or to show it to you, but Bam wanted you to see it. So at the end of this podcast series, barring unforeseen circumstances, that is what it's basically going to end on. A lot of the interview left me with more questions than answers, but it's something that I am committed to getting to the bottom of. That's all I really had for today. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. Okay, bye.